Hello and welcome everyone. We're so pleased you're here. Uh, this is, uh, I'm Leslie Esslinger and I'm the Director of Education at Becker School Supplies. And I'm here along with our great team from Becker's. Um, so many of the Becker's folks are on this call. Um, when Becky, when Becky, when Barry presents, um, nobody wants to miss it. So we're always uh, so pleased to be part of this. And we have Terry and Marilyn that will be here helping to answer questions along the way and keep us keep us well paced. Um, just so everyone knows, this is our special event for the Week of the Young Child. And this is something that happens every April. It's sponsored by the National Association for the Education of Young Children, known as NACI in our world. And um, we thought that this, this kind of topic really embodies everything that the Week of the Young Child is about because it's it's a special event for parents, teachers, and children to offer you tools that help de-stress and build resilience. And I think that's something we all could use. So we're so pleased that you're here to join us today. And we're gonna go to the next slide if it only would cooperate with me. There we go. Okay, so uh, some quick housekeeping, which we always do. Um, we welcome you to ask any questions you might have. Put those in the Q&A for our team, like any little logistical things. Um, I can't hear, I can't see. Um, I lost my cat. Uh, put those in the box for Terry and Marilyn in the question and answer box. And if you'd like to more comment on on what you're seeing or a chit chat with Barry a little bit. Let's keep that in the chat box and Barry will do her best to keep her eye on that and stay tuned in and you know get any reinforcement you wanna give her as we go along. There will be a recording of this event and that link will be sent to you afterwards for anybody that's here and wants to see it again or share it with colleagues. We will send that link to your email. At the same time, we will send you a link to receive this beautiful certificate of attendance for today's hour of professional development. I encourage you, please, when you get that, to download it, fill in your name, and take care of it right away. That link expires in about 30 days. So typically, um, 30 days from now, we start getting some emails saying, oh, my link expired. So you've been forewarned. When you get it, please open it and print it and put it in your folder. Uh, at the end of the session, we hope you can stay for the for the full time because uh, we have a special announcement from Barry along with a promo code we would like to share with you. And as always, we try to save time for questions and answers at the end. Um, anything that we missed or that you want Barry to review with you, we will surely do that. And um, now it's my absolute pleasure to introduce our special speaker today. So this is Barry. She is a beloved kids yogi. Barry Carl has been a welcome resource to so many during the COVID pandemic. And now she's here for a special webinar to nurture you. We know from experience that when you feel better, those around you will feel better, will feel better too. So many of you know Barry from her other webinars and training events. So I'm gonna skip the usual bio, which is quite impressive. And just let you know that this is one exceptional woman who wants to get her message out to the audience that is so deserving, and that is you, all the people that work with young children. She cares deeply about educators, families, and the children in their care. Barry has been doing this work for a long time, and she always strives to do more, to do better, and to do right by you. She always has a new project, idea, or inspiration in the works. So we invite you to stay tuned, stay connected, and we promise peace and calm will come your way. And Barry, I'm going to turn it over to you. Mm, thank you so much for that, Leslie. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Um, whether you're th this is your first webinar with me or your fifth webinar with me, I'm really excited to be with you today. Um, I want to let you know that if, you know, for some reason you don't know me and this is the first time you're meeting me, uh, you can trust me. <laughs> I've been doing this work for a really long time and I'm here to take care of you um, today. So the first thing I always like to do is a little bit of housekeeping, you guys. So if you can silence your cell phones, if you can go somewhere where you can give this time to yourself, I want you to have this time 
The mind doesn't like to be distracted. It's stressful. Um, I have a lot to share with you today. You might want to take a few notes, um, but just being here, you'll be present. You'll be able to infuse this with quality. You'll, you'll bring it in your body. You'll remember it. So that's, um, so just give this time to yourself. Um, all right, so I'm going to start by saying we've done, we did so many webinars last year together. We had some really beautiful times. It's really been a year. <laughs> and my message as I, you know, I think about the year and I think about what's next for all of us, um, consistently the idea that self-care needs to be at the top of our list is just what's coming back and back and back. Um, we cannot draw from an empty cup. We just, we can't serve, we can't help if we don't take care of ourselves. So I like to say that self-care is selfless. Self-care is selfless. So you guys, this has got to be the priority going forward. I promise it will give everything back to you and all the, and all the children that you hear, um, that you serve. And I'm, you know, I'm not here to give you more to do. I'm here to actually give you less to do <laughs> and to sort of do more with the time that you have, but create space. I want you to create space in your mind and even your calendar. And that's the first tip I'm going to share with you today. If you want to know your future, look at your present. As we start to sort of potentially get out there a little bit more, no matter what's going on, what you say yes to now is what you'll be doing a month from now, a year from now, a few weeks from now. Um, so pruning the calendar, you know, being really conscious. Do I want to host that family barbecue? Do I want to take on this club? Do I want, I mean, sometimes we do, but just, you know, do I want to have dinner plans for the next 52 weeks? I mean, you might, you know, but just being really conscious about what you say yes to. If you want to know your future, look at your present. So pruning your calendar, you know, just the way that you prune your plants um, to help them grow, we create space so that we can give ourselves time for self-care. So that's the first thing that I want to share with you. The second tip that I want to share, I've got a lot of tools today, but I really just wanted to offer this to you. If you're some, going through something right now and you don't know what to do, the best thing that you can do is take care of yourself and just turn to health and just turn to taking care of yourself. Um, I don't know if you know about mirror neurons, but your children, animals in the wild, people in your family, they mirror your neurons. So when you're taking care of yourself, it's like contagious. And so people will ride on that. They'll start to see that. They'll be inspired by that. So when you don't know what to do, just turn to your own health and just turn to your own self-care, okay? All right, so um, let's start off by taking care of you. I've been having a great time. I've been doing some parenting workshops with my coach, Pam. She's an attachment therapist and she is brilliant. I'm gonna give you a few of her, her tips today in my peaceful parenting section. But this was one of the first activities that we did and I absolutely love it. So if you have your little markers, um, and if you don't have markers and you don't have pen, you know, you can kind of do this in, in your imagination. Um, so this is what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to have you close your eyes for a moment. I'm going to have you check in. So we're going to come out of the chat now, you guys, and we're going to experience this in our minds and our bodies. Um, one of my favorite settling activities. So I want you to imagine something that gets you a little bit worked up. Um, maybe when COVID first hit, you know, maybe those feelings of un unsureness, insecurity, or maybe it's something else. And I want you to notice where you feel it in your body. I want you to notice where you feel it in your body and kind of just feeling these sensations of being uncomfortable. Okay. Then I want you to open your eyes. And I want you to choose a color that best represents feeling uncomfortable. Um, I like red. Um, red is great, but it can be anything you want. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna just draw a circle and you're gonna put in some lines about what that feeling feels like for you, what it feels like in your body. So it doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Like, I don't know if you could tell this is my, this is my circle here you know, but just what that feeling of not feeling comfortable feels like to you, what color it is, what it looks like. Okay. So just go ahead and do that. It doesn't have to be too super elaborate, like I said. Okay. All right. I am definitely not Picasso. So 
when we're done with that, I'm gonna bring you back. Okay. So I want you to come back and I want you to close your eyes and I want you to take a breath in. Exhale all your air out. Inhale, breathe in. Exhale the air out. One more nice breath in. Exhale all the air out. And now I want you to imagine in your mind someplace really peaceful, somewhere or some place where you feel safe. Might be with people that you love. It might be somewhere on the beach, somewhere nice and peaceful. And just kind of notice where you feel that in your body. Feelings of kind of safeness and sureness and feeling kind of protected and safe. Where do you feel that and peaceful? Just doing your best doesn't have to be perfect. And now I want you to open your eyes and I want you to go back and choose a new color that represents peace. So for me, it's blue, but again, if you don't have a color or if you need to do this in your imagination and just draw another circle and draw the lines that kind of represent peace to you or however it's gonna look. Could be dots, it could be lines. Mine is again, very simple. Um, just anything here. Just something that kind of shows you your peace circle. So we have our peace circle. Mm -hmm. right. So I want you to come back one more time, close your eyes and go back a little bit to that more activated state where you were the first time in the first circle, something that feels a little uncomfortable. Let's take a breath in and out. And now I want you to slowly imagine your peace circle. And just kind of imagine it coming from the top of your head and all the way down your body and your arms and your legs and let the body follow. Just let the body follow, you know, kind of letting go of the protector. Maybe that first circle was trying to keep you safe and just kind of letting go of that protector and saying, we're okay now, we're peaceful, we're all right, we're okay. Just kind of letting it settle in, taking a breath in, exhaling, another breath in, Exhaling, good, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And uh, let me know, what'd you think? You can come in the chat here for a moment. What'd you think? Um, so I learned this in a parenting group. I use it a lot. It's just another idea, my peace circle. <laughs> you know, if I'm feeling kind of activated, I can close my eyes and I can bring that on pretty quickly. This is a great thing to do anywhere. You can do this with your kids. You can most certainly do this with your kids. Your shoulders will get better. That's great. It's a great thing to do like at a staff meeting or a parent meeting or um, a family engagement, you know, like kind of getting out of our heads and getting more into our bodies. Um, that's a really nice thing, you know, just kind of this is called more somatic experiences. Good. I'm so glad that that's really helpful. Um, and you can spend more time, you know, you could do this activity with your kids, you can make it a little bit more elaborate, you can have them hold up their diagrams. That's great. So I'm really happy. Okay. So, um, you know, these things literally take moments, they don't, they don't take long. I'm, again, I'm here to just give you more downtime with that. And, and it's like sand through the hourglass just to kind of let our mind settle. We want to teach from there. Um, good. Good. I'm really glad that this was really helpful. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to bring you guys out of the chat because I'm going to share something else. I did a webinar recently. This is something new. This is Havening Touch, which I've just discovered. I did this at my last webinar and I've gotten so many emails 
oh my gosh, I love this. My kids love this, my infants, my toddlers, my kindergarten teachers. Good, I'm so glad. Thank you for your, for your feedback about the peace circle. Okay, so come back out of the chat because I don't want you to miss this. Okay, so this is new. This is Havening Touch and I've been noticing it's kind of like a happiness hack. So you're gonna hold your hands here like you're giving yourself a hug and you're gonna bring your, you're going from your shoulders down to your elbows and your shoulders to your elbows shoulders to your elbow, just this kind of gentle touch with me here, okay? Just kind of being a little, um, investigating what does this feel like to you? Shoulders to elbows, shoulders to elbows, shoulders to elbows, shoulders. Yes, havening is very calming. And now we're gonna go from fingertips to temple, fingertips to temple, fingertips to temple, fingertips to temple, fingertips to temple fingertips temple sorry forehead to temple forehead to temple and then we're going to go from wrist to fingers wrist to fingers wrist to fingers wrist to fingers here we go wrist to fingers wrist to fingers wrist to fingers wrist to fingers so coming back from shoulders to the elbows and don't worry about um i'm going to show you where you can see this again i just want you to relax and enjoy yourself right now and you can even say to yourself like i'm i'm okay I am safe, I am calm, I am peaceful, I'm okay, it's okay, it's okay. Forehead to temple, forehead to temple, forehead to temple, forehead to temple, and fingertips, uh, wrist to fingertips, wrist to fingertips, wrist to fingertips, wrist to fingertips, okay? So that's havening. I've gotten a lot of really good feedback about that. What do you guys think? Do you like that? Is that something that you might like to start to do? I think that would be really exciting for you guys. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I know that I'm, I'm seeing your feedback. I know that all teachers need this. I agree. <laughs> I wish I had learned this when I was young, but we're here now. Um, that's great. I'm so glad that you really enjoy it. Okay, beautiful. So good, good, good. I'm really glad that you like it. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to bring you out of the chat here for a moment, my little friends. That was our, so we did our settling circle day game. We did havening. Here it is, havening touch. And if you'd like to see that, um, I put it on my Instagram and my Facebook. So if you're not on my Instagram and Facebook, I have a lot of tips and tricks for kids yoga and mindfulness there. I put a lot of just good news and I did a video for Havening so you guys would have that again so you can just enjoy it. Good, I'm glad that you're gonna like that. So now we already have two great things off the bat. We have our peace circle and we have our Havening, so we're good. Okay, let's move on. So let me pull you out of the chat now so we can keep going. Um, it's time, I've got more, um, I've got more tips, uh, more activities for you, but I just wanna talk a few key concepts about anxiety and stress. It's time to get a little bit more friendly with anxiety, okay? It's time to get more friendly with anxiety. Um, you know, every time I do this for you guys or for your children, I always wanna take care of you first and I want you to understand what we're doing and how to help us with your own life and your kid's life. We have our protector. We have our brain, which is trying to keep us safe. You know, this brain is anticipating a lion in the wild. Um, okay, pulling you out of the chat now because I don't want you to miss this. Um, so our brain is anticipating a lion in the wild. You know, our brain is just doing its job. Okay, our limbic system is here to help us survive. We need it. This is what keeps us from, you know, running into a car. This is what keeps us on our toes, you know, keeps us safe. So we need to thank our brains for that. We need to be grateful for it when we're having anxiety, when we're having stress. Okay, you know, I know you're trying to protect me now. Thank you. I had anxiety for years, years and years and years. I had a panic disorder for like seven years and I didn't know any of this. So that's why I teach it. But one of the things that made the biggest difference um, is when I started to be kinder to myself. I used to be really mean to myself when I had anxiety and stress and I shouldn't be feeling this way. And that's not true. Of course I should be feeling this way. We have a limbic system. We have a survival mechanism. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us from the flame. Thank you for keeping us from the lion. I appreciate it, you know, but I don't need you right now. I know you're trying to protect me. I don't need you right now. 
this is how I want you to start to talk to yourself, guys, and your life will change, okay? Life will change. So after you're starting to feel a little bit anxious and after you're starting to feel a little bit stressed, after you say thank you, <laughs> I know you're trying to help me right now, thank you, I want you to check in and see what the breath is doing. And now I'm going to take one of the most powerful concepts that you can ever learn and I'm going to make it super, super simple for you guys, okay? When we're feeling stressed, when we're feeling anxious, and this is why we spend so much time teaching breath to children. What is my breath doing? This is the first thing that I learned in my yoga teacher training. If you ever notice what your breath is doing when you're anxious, it's shallow. It's shallow. Okay. The first thing to do in any anxious situation is to lengthen your exhale, to notice what your breath is doing and to lengthen your exhale. Shallow breathing is a sign to the nervous system to stay anxious that something is wrong. All right. The body is just trying, you know, the body's just responding. Uh Oh, lion. She's, she's, she's not breathing. You know, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. And then we have a whole host of physiological responses, right? Body is constantly reading our oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. So all we want to do is exhale. We're just going to breathe a little bit deeper. We're going to bring in more oxygen and bring on the parasympathetic nervous system, which is our brakes for fight or flight. So simple. I wish someone taught me that in school, you know? I mean, I read the Scarlet Letter nine times, but it might've been nice if someone taught me this, okay? So the breath is the key to the emotions. If you want to control the, the emotions, you have to learn to control the breath. And it starts with noticing what your breath is doing and learning to lengthen the exhale. And this is all like building a muscle. It's just building a muscle. You're just learning the relaxation response. So let me give you an, a, an example here. It's the middle of the night the other night. I'm up two o'clock in the morning or whenever it was. I actually don't know what time it is because I don't look at the clock because that could trigger me. Oh, you know, so I don't like to know. But um, middle of the night, I just feel fear. I just feel fear. I just feel panic. I have no idea why. First thing I do, okay, okay. I know you're trying to protect me right now. I know survival brain. I know, I know, I know. I'm okay. I don't need you right now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That kindness is huge. And then it's like, what is the breath doing? Ooh, shallow. Oh, I see. I see carbon dioxide, oxygen, physiological fight or flight response. So what do I do? I breathe. I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out. I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out. I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out. Okay. Most of the time I can fall back asleep. Sometimes I use my little herbal sleep remedies and they help, but most of the time they help me fall back asleep. Okay. I used to be really mean to myself when I was anxious. And one of the things that helped me out the most was being kinder to myself. I just got nicer. You know, one of my favorite sayings is resilient people have the quality of being on their own side. Resilient people have the quality of being on their own side, right? So having this compassion for ourselves, having this compassion for our stress, having this compassion for hard times when it's difficult is really huge. And where do we start? Okay, Barry, great. Where do I start? I don't even know. Tell me where to start. You start with the tools. You start with the tools, which I'm going to share with you now. All right. So the ABCs of mindfulness. Here we go. A, awareness. I'm not comfortable. What's my breath doing? Shallow. B, breathe. Deep in the breath. Deep in the breath. I'm going to bring this to your kids too. Deep in the breath. Lengthen the exhale. And C is compassion. Positive self-talk. It's okay. It's okay. I know you're afraid. I, I get it. Protect your brain. I got it. We're okay. All right. So we start with the tools. And this is what we're going to do right now. Um, because where words fail, mindfulness speaks. And if you want to nurture yourself and nurture your, your, your whole, your children and your classroom, you're going to start Battery, with the tools. 80%. Okay. So let's do a few right now, and then we'll bring everything together. Okay. So we're going to start with ocean breath and whether or not 
you do a lot of breathing for re relaxation, it doesn't matter, you guys. Breath work is a workout. It takes a little practice. But I'm here to tell you that you can do this with your kids and you can practice at school. You can practice relaxing at school. How amazing is that, okay? I've never lost a child yet by closing my mind, at, closing my eyes and relaxing. So let's go ahead and try it. Let's just see what this does for you. So I want you to sit up nice and tall and right away you can bring your shoulders back. This is gonna help open up our chest and give ourselves a little bit more oxygen. This is ocean breath. You can imagine your belly is full of water like the ocean. And as you inhale, the waves rise in your belly. And as you exhale, the waves fall. Inhale, the waves rise. Exhale, the waves fall. Inhale, the waves rise. Exhale, the waves fall. Just doing your best, just deepening your breath if you can. If at any point you don't feel comfortable, just come back to normal breathing. No problem. So just imagining the belly is full of water. Inhale, the waves rise. Exhale, the waves fall. Inhale, the waves rise. Exhale, the waves fall. One more time, breathing in. Breathing out. Open your eyes for a moment. I'm gonna show you shark fins. So we just were in the ocean. And so we're gonna take our thumb and put it on our temple right in the middle of our third eye. And then we've got our hands up here like a fin. Okay, and I'm pressing into my third eye here and I'm stimulating that frontal lobe. And this is shark fin. And I just want you to feel this kind of steadiness like a shark in the water. Just take some easy breaths here. And you're just saying to yourself, I am steady. I am steady. Just let the breath be easy. Just exhaling. Feeling that point of contact. Imagining a beautiful ocean and a nice, strong shark. I am steady. You can do this. And you can bring your hands back down. And when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes and tell me how you are feeling there today with ocean breath and shark fin. Um, these are also on our mindfulness cards that we worked so hard. Oh my gosh, Leslie and I worked for ages. Ocean breath, and shark fin. These are great things that you can do with your children. They're great for transition. Good, more relaxed and calm. This is so much fun. I love this. Ocean and shark. <laughs> Less stressed, you know, so you can like pick up a card. You can pick up one of these activities. You can do this with your children. You can do this with yourself. It's so nice, right? Going to fall asleep. Sometimes we don't, you know, the only time we really relax is when we sleep. So that's why we kind of feel like that a little bit, but it's nice, right? They're really great for transition instead of, okay, everyone. Okay. Put it down, put it down, put it down. Come on. It's time to move on. You guys put your books down. It's like, oh, come into your shark. Press your hand down, steady, steady. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Tell yourself that I am steady, just like a shark. I am ready. And when we put our hands down, we're gonna get ready for story, okay? Very magical, okay? It's so really just no bad time to do mindfulness. Okay, good. 
All right, I'm going to show you another one. This is bubblegum breath. Um, one of the things that I, I get a lot of um, compliments about lately is like, Barry, I know I'm supposed to breathe and I get my reminder from my Apple Watch and it says breathe and I just want to like choke that thing. Um, we can do it in fun ways. You know, that's why we're sharing this with our children too. But make no mistake, we're lengthening exhales, we're bringing on the paras parasympathetic nervous system. We're lighting up that frontal lobe, you know, we're training our, our brains for the relaxation response. So it might look like bubble gum, but it's profound. Okay, so here's bubble gum breath. You're gonna take out your bubble gum, you're gonna put it in your mouth, and you're gonna chew. And chew 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 and chew. Good. Let's go ahead and breathe in. Exhale, blow your bubble. Inhale, breathe in. Exhale, blow your bubble. Inhale, breathe in. Exhale, blow your bubble. Good, pop. Do it again, chew and chew and chew. Inhale. Exhale, blow your bubble. Inhale, breathe in. Exhale, blow your bubble. Inhale, breathe in. Exhale, blow your bubble. Good. And now it's time for snack. <laughs> it's time to put our toys away, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So that's bubble gum breath. So we did shark fin and we did ocean breath. Um, we did bubble gum breath. And this is my new favorite saying, you guys, where words fail, mindfulness speaks. Um, I, ha I just got this great email. I have um, an online teacher training, Yoga Palooza. It's really fun, right? Um, it's my Yoga Palooza teacher training. It's my online yoga and mindfulness training, which kind of walks a lot of uh, teachers through this step by step. Some of you are in there, which is so exciting. Um, I just got, check out this email I just got the other day from Kansas. And she said, I wanted to show you these aha moment that I had with breathing. Now, I don't know if you have children like this, um, like that Kansas is describing, but if you do, you might appreciate it. We have a child who has so much energy she could burst. Sometimes it's quite difficult for the teachers. Um, the child could be loud and disruptive. Yesterday, I asked if I could take this child into the hallway and practice breathing. I started with bare breath. So bare breath is in the course and it's also in our mindfulness deck. Um, and at first her breath was very choppy and full of excitement. So going back to what I told you guys, you know, the short, fast breath, okay? So Kansas told her to lengthen the breath, lengthen it. Can you make your bare breath slower? So she started to do that. Then we did rainbow breathing, which is also in the course and it's in the deck, Re rainbow relaxation where you might breathe in the color red and exhale the color blue. And she modeled that for the little girl. And then they did ocean breath and they did ocean breath like five times. You know, imagine your belly is full of water like the ocean, breathe in, let the waves rise, breathe out. So they did a few of these things out in the hallway. They spent a few minutes together. By the end, she was sitting crisscross applesauce, completely calm, I had chills. It was exactly what the child needed. She walked back into the classroom happy and content and the teacher was beyond amazed. And why was that so successful? Why was that so successful for the teacher and for the child? Why? Um, we're exhaling, we're exhaling, we're using our breath, we're slowing it down and we're using these really fun activities. And it works, it works. So here are my tips for mindfulness with kids. You wanna calm consistently. You wanna choose an intentional time in the classroom to start to do this with your kids. You wanna do it in your life, but this is your time too, okay? I'm not doing bare breath or rainbow relaxation and then grading papers, you know? I'm doing it, my eyes are closed and I'm with those children, you know? My eyes are closed and I'm just like breathing in and breathing out and breathing in with them. 
breathing out mirror neurons, mirror neurons, okay? So they're getting that from you and you're giving it back. So now you're using your class time to relax your children, to teach them the relaxation response and relax yourself deep, okay? Circle time, transition, so great for transitions, you know? John, I told you we're not doing that anymore. No, you guys, no, please, we're putting it away. No, just, okay, guys, bubble gum breath. Breathe in, exhale, blow your bubble. Breathe in, exhale, blow your bubble. Breathe in, exhale, blow your bubble. Good, now you're a little bit more settled and calm and it's time to open our lunchbox, all right? We are building month muscle, we are strengthening executive function. Huge, 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 all right? Good stuff. Um, in addition to building strength in the core and the spine, the legs and the arms, yoga. Yoga opens up the chest cavity, which is increasing our capacity for oxygen. And that's why yoga is so effective. Now, I can't do a lot of yoga with you today. I'm in my chair, um, you know, but a lot of people do yoga or they do yoga with my songs. Um, we also have our yoga cards, of course. I know a lot of you have those. This is the other thing we worked really hard with Leslie on and they tell you what songs they go with. But yoga, if you're not doing some yoga, whether you're you know, using my music or using the cards or you're doing something, yoga is preparing us to relax. So it's different from other forms of movement. Um, so if you're not already doing a little yoga in your classroom, I encourage you, um, even if you can't touch your toes or you don't have a yoga mat, there's lots of ways to do a little bit of yoga into your classroom. Okay, so that was my little section there and I hope that you enjoyed that. And um, I will come back and touch on all of these things, but I did promise you a little bit of peaceful parenting. And I wanted to share um, a little bit about that with you right now. I have a mindfulness background and it has made a really dramatic difference in my parenting. I'm helping to raise two girls who lost their parents, uh, major trauma. And uh, it has been just a living experience using mindfulness um, and, and being creative about all the things that have happened. So I'm about to share some of my favorite tools with you right now, and we're gonna put everything together. When you don't know what to do, you choose attachment, okay? So I have this incredible attachment specialist, Pam. She's amazing. And what she has told me, Pam Perkins here in uh, Woodstock, New York, staying connected to the child is the most important thing. And it's bigger than any other agenda. And it really takes a lot of stress away from any situation because, you know, when you don't know what to do, staying connected to the child is super important. Parenting, she described it as, you know, when they get older, you want that you don't want them relying on their peers, you know, their, their, their teenage peers. It's like the blind leading the blind. You know, you want them to feel safe. You want them to come to you, want them to talk to you with their problems. Um, for teaching, we want to create a safe place for children to learn. Okay, they can't learn if they're not feeling safe in the classroom. So there are all these attachment tools and I'm gonna teach you some of my favorite right now. And number one, calm before you correct. Calm before you correct. Check it out. When the brain is in fight or flight, all the creative ideas that you need in that moment are not available. When you have a challenging child and you don't know what to do, you have a challenging situation, um, everything that you need to solve that is not possible. Because when we're in fight or flight, when we're activated, when our breath is shallow and we're in this physiological response, all the body is getting ready to fight. It's getting to, ready to freeze or it's getting ready to fly. So all of the energy and all the intelligence is going to the extra muscles. It's your feet, your fingertips, your heart. It's almost like we get dumb in that moment, okay? So this part of our brain is not lit up. This is our solution part of our brain. We're in survival, okay? So we're activated. And when we're in a rage, when we're in a rage, everything escalates and we rarely say anything helpful anyway, you know? Um, so, so, you know, a child says something to you, really pisses you off, really gets you upset. Um, you walk in there 
and you, um, oh, thank you so much, you guys. I just love your feedback. I love doing this with you so much. Um, you know, I walked in the other day and Gage was supposed to be in math and she's just not in math. You know, she's just, just not online. You know, she doesn't have a care in the world. She has on her headphones and you just want to like, you just want to lose your mind, you know, but you have to remember your ABCs. You have to remember your ABCs. Okay. You have to calm before you correct. What is my breath doing? I have to breathe. I have to breathe and I have to be kind to myself. All right. An activated adult never deactivated a child. Never deactivate a child. All right. And you guys know what this is like as parents, especially as parents. When we say things and we just get everything, you know, we just make that much worse. If you can calm yourself, people have asked me, Barry, what is the number one thing that I could do to make a difference in my home or classroom? What is like, if I was to do one thing, what would it be? And the answer is to calm yourself, calm yourself down. Mirror neurons. When you don't know what to do, you take care of yourself, okay? So when you're activated, choose a practice. Do rainbow relaxation, do ocean breath, do your peace circle. Think about your peace circle. It can happen so quickly and you'll be much closer to the answer. You'll be much closer to the answer. All right, good. I'm so glad. I'm really glad that this is helpful. And you know what, guys? You don't even have to solve the problem in real time. You don't have to solve the math thing right away. If you know, you can walk out and you can figure it out at night. Hey, when you're calmer, you know what? I noticed you weren't in math today. What was going on? Okay. So you want to calm yourself down and you want to parent from there. So you, so calm before you correct. Another attachment tool, and this is so huge. Um, I don't know there was an attachment specialist. I learned this from Pam. I know someone else had coined this phrase. Why is a four letter word replace why with how? Let me give you an example. Why did you spill the milk? Why did you just spill the milk all over the place? You just spilled that water and you just spilled that milk all over the place. Why did you do that? So what is the child thinking and feeling and deciding in that moment? What is the child thinking and feeling and deciding in that moment? What are you thinking and feeling and deciding when someone says, why did you do that? Okay. You replace why with how. The milk spilled. How did that happen? Um, well, you know, the water was sort of, the glass was kind of close to the edge. All right. So now we have to figure that out. Okay. All right. So replace why with how. You're not in math. Why are you not in math? Why are you not in math? Huh, Kate, get, getting control of myself. Kate, you're supposed to be in math. You're not in math. How did that happen? Oh, Aunt Barry, I'm having so much trouble with math and my computer isn't in charge and I have to remember to charge my computer. And, and you know, I sometimes I feel like such a dummy in math and I could use a little extra help. Okay, great. So now we're getting to the, to the source of the problem. Okay, we're not making it worse. What is the child thinking, feeling, and deciding? Saying that to yourself is so helpful. And the last little tool here is take an attachment detour. Take an attachment detour. So whatever is supposed to be the agenda, we're gonna take a little detour. So this morning, we were supposed to start homeroom and Gage was late, but she was very like cuddly with us and she wanted to be with us and she wanted to talk to us. And you know what? I was like, she can be five minutes late to homeroom. She can be 10 minutes late to homeroom. I'm gonna take a detour to get some good attachment in the bank right now, okay? What is she thinking and feeling and deciding in that moment when I'm giving her this time? So this is really helpful. All right, so those are some attachment tools. They've really, really helped me. Um, I really hope that they helped you. And now we're gonna kind of walk here towards the finish line. Children are going back to school in fight or flight, you guys, right? I mean, we don't know what's going on at home, how we're feeling, and it's a hard place to learn from. And we want to make our classrooms safe. We want to make them nurturing. We want to work on attachment with children. We want to work on mindfulness. We want to calm ourselves down. We want to make emotional needs a priority as much as any academic needs. You know, I skipped seventh grade, all of seventh grade. Um, I had a hip problem. I was in the hospital all of seventh grade. And it wasn't like the entire world skipped seventh grade. No, I was the only one. I caught up. You know, helping our kids being resilient, solving problems in a creative way, teaching them to calm themselves down is a major plus this year. 
we're sending them off to, I don't know. Welcome, graduating from preschool. Good luck. I hope there's not another pandemic. I hope there's not a, you know, global warming. We can be using this time to teach about mindfulness and taking care of the emotional needs. And it takes care of us too, you guys. It takes the pressure off us. So if we can teach a little bit about resilience, this year would have been worth a lot. Okay, we can't take away all their suffering, but we can give them the tools. So here is another wonderful thing to do. This is a check-in feelings chart, and this is great. So you can take a screenshot about this. Um, you can also do this you know, yourself. You can create your own check-in feelings chart. And this is a great way for you to get information about how your kids are feeling, about what they might be going through. Um, and so all you do is you have the, you know, you have the feelings and you ask your children to choose maybe up to three. No problem. You ask them to choose maybe up to three. And you want to work on other words for happiness because there's actually so many negative things. So you have to be a little creative with your with your happy ones. But what's happening here, and this is really important, is we're just naming them. We're just naming them. We're not getting into it. We're not exposing it. I'm sad because I'm anxious because I'm bored because, you know, we're just naming it. And this is really key because if you're anxious, if you're like, if you're a child and you say I'm anxious and the child and the parent is like, why are you anxious? What's wrong? What's, what do you mean? What do you mean you're anxious? What is the child thinking and feeling and deciding in that moment? There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with my anxiety. Oh, there's no, there's not. There's a little protector. The protector's there. Thank you, protector. It's okay. It's okay. All right, cool. What else? Tell me more. Um, I'm also feeling frustrated. Okay, good. Tell me more. I'm disappointed. Okay. Maybe we'll take a few breaths. You want to take a few breaths with me? Okay. So we're just noticing. We're not judging. We're just noticing. And that is really helpful. Um, I went through many years of cognitive behavioral therapy for my anxiety. And so I can't tell you how many times she said, so what? And I was like, oh my gosh. And I felt like this and I felt like this. And I, she was like, so what? And it was so helpful. She wasn't like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know? I mean, you know, when she says, so what? It's like, huh, maybe this isn't so bad and I start to feel better. Also, when we do our check-in feelings chart, um, it's great for compassion. Oh, Sarah feels sad today. Sarah, you know, Sarah feels lonely. And then it helps the children kind of rally around Sarah. So that's really nice too. So again, it's not good or bad. We're just noticing and we're just sharing, okay? Okay, good. You having fun? Um, all right, so I'm gonna teach you another mindfulness activity here. We're gonna move around a little bit. If I could do yoga with you, I would. Um, I wanna teach you the, um, I wanna teach you this superhero heart. And then we'll wrap up. So I want you to, um, I want to get your heart rate up. So if you're here, I want you to just do some like airbags with your arms. Woo. And I want you to run with your feet in place. Run, 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 run with your feet in place. Run, 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 run. Maybe some stretches up. Another one of my favorite activities, put your hands on your heart. Put your hands on your heart. You got our heart rates up a little bit. You can have your kids jumping. You can have your kids doing yoga, jumping jacks. Put your hands on your heart and just notice your heart beating. Just take a few breaths and just start to slow it down, breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Just nice and easy with your breath. 
And when your heart starts to calm down, just go ahead and raise your hand when your heartbeat is starting to come down a little bit, okay? That superhero heart, that's such a great one. I love that, all right? So, oh, so much fun. One last thing before we recap here. Um, I'm just really enjoying this so much. I am a singer and I wanted to sing you guys this little song about peace, about feeling happy and telling ourselves that we're good and telling ourselves that we're happy because um, we need to tell ourselves that we're safe and that we're good and that we're surrounded by peace. So I'm gonna ask you to just follow along with your hands here as we get ready to wrap up our little webinar. And I'll do a little summary. So glad that you guys are here. Let's get out of our brains and let's get into our voice and our bodies a little bit. Peace before me, so just follow along with me. Peace behind me, peace to my left. Peace in my right, peace above me, peace below me, peace to all, peace to the universe. And you can make little peace signs, peace, and you can send it out to the hundreds of people here. Light behind me, light to my left, light to my right, light above me, light below me, light to all, light to the universe. So shine out your light to people that need it. Behind me, so glad you guys are here. Love to my left, love to my right, love above me, love below me, love to all, love to the universe, and just give yourself some love, love, self love. be mindful of your time. I could do this with you all day. <laughs> I want to remind you what we did today. It is a nice way to end. This is what we did today. If you need to remember that or take a little screenshot or just we watch the webinar sometime and so you can just relax and relax and relax. Ah, so good. What comes next? What comes next? Yes. There's the music. Yes, there is a yoga. Yes, it's at Becker's, the peace song and lots of other songs for kids yoga. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, yes, the relaxation album, very relaxing. So Ocean Breath is on there as well as the cards. I have five versions of that because um, it's so popular, but the relaxation album is there. Nice, nice, nice. And the last thing I wanna show you is this. I have a little twist on this today. You guys, I think some of you, many of you know that I have a course, an online yoga and mindfulness training course to train you how to do this and to bring all this magic into your classroom. And every time I do these webinars, I love doing them and I get lots of, you know, emails like, hey, can you come and train my whole staff? And I would, I can, I would love to, but now we have this beautiful course 
And a lot of you have are in this course and have beautiful teachers that are learning how to incorporate yoga and mindfulness into the classroom, friends like Yvette, and it's been so great. But what my vision is and my hope now, and I could use your help, um, is that we can train everyone. We can train everybody at the school. We can learn to use these tools. You know, our kids need these tools and our, our teachers need these tools. And it's not just one teacher here and there. We can create like real change with a whole school. So this course is so beautiful with all the step-by-step -step activities. And I filmed it in this beautiful studio. And I would love to get this into more schools. Um, and that is my vision, you know, to get more teachers trained. So Becker's is going to help me. Becker's is going to help me. I'm so excited. My best friends at Becker's, who I love, are going to help me share the course, not just with you individually. I love having you here, but like also with, um, so it's not just one teacher here and there, that we can start to train the whole staff. So if you think yoga and mindfulness is important, we want you to tell your administrators and we want you to tell your directors that hey this is available and we can do some training and we can all be trained to teach yoga and mindfulness with these songs and we, with these activities um kansas who who was earlier today with all those activities it worked so well for her jody loves it everybody loves it you know so this would be um a really really great thing to share i could really use your help please tell your directors, tell your administrators to reach out to us. I'll get on the phone with them. I'll find out what you guys need. I'll find out if this is a good fit. I'll find out what your most challenging um, thing is and I'll see if I can help you. So thank you so much. We can use your help sharing that. Um, I love being with you, Leslie. Are you here? Aww. I am, I am. And I'll, um, I'm gonna share my screen again and try to just wrap up everything and don't leave yet because we have a promo code for you and there's a few more things we wanted to share with you. So as Barry said, um, this course is great and I can speak from personal experience because I took the course. And to me, it's like having Barry on demand in your house. When I took it, um, I took it at my own pace over a few weeks. Uh, you can just start and stop whatever you have the time for. And it was great for me. I did it right after dinner. I managed to get out of doing the dishes for many weeks in a row. Oh, I have Barry. Um, I'm going to go do my Barry course. So uh, I do encourage you to, to learn more about it. Uh, we have the link right here. You can get lots more information about it. There's no, Barry doesn't have any hidden agendas. It's, it's just what she's telling you. It's, it's really to give you the tools and the confidence you need to bring this to the children in your classrooms and also to yourselves. It's a gift to yourselves. Uh, the other thing I really wanted to point out, because we we are all so victims, we all fall victim to these things where it says, oh, you know, sign up for this. And then the next thing you know, it says, oh, well, you only have this with that sign up. But now you have to add on this and you have to add on that. It's it's not that at all. When you sign up for this course, it's everything you need. It's everything you will need to be able to use this in your classroom. So that's from my own personal experience. That is not a paid ad. <laughs> Also, we promised you a promo code and here it is. Um, we wanted you to have access to these mindfulness tools. Um, these are all the things that Barry used today and there are many more at chopbecker.com. So here again is the website where you can access all of this. It's only good through April 16th. This is really something we wanted to do for Week of the Young Child. So if you like these cards that Barry used today, um, any of the music, I love the music. I mean, Barry said that was my favorite, but truthfully, Barry, once you did, is it called Magic, the Magic Four or Magical Four? Oh, Magical Four, yeah. Oh. That's on. Awesome. Sorry, awesome. then that became my favorite. So I, I have... <laughs> so many favorites of of barry's music so we do encourage you to to check it out try them out uh thanks for coming today a couple last things is um, if you have not received your new becker's catalog we have so many new products so please go to our website and you can um either flip flip through a catalog right online or order one to come to your address if you're working from home or at your school and um we have another webinar coming up uh, we love all of the people that 
continue to come back and back to our webinars. Many of you know Holly. Holly will be doing a summer science webinar on June 3rd. So stay in touch, stay tuned. As I said, uh, Barry is a dear friend of Becker's as well. Um, so it's mutual. Um, she's always working on something new. I know she has something else up her sleeve that I'm not even gonna reveal yet. So just uh, stay tuned. We don't want you to miss anything. Thanks so Thank much. You. I'll stay here in the chat too. Thank you for yeah. me. Feel Thank free to, we, to we let me know did it right till five o'clock, Barry. Yeah. The timing oh, was, wow, we're getting this <laughs> nailed. So yes, um, we're, I'm going to go off camera, but we would love to chat with you a little bit more and we're always here for you. Thanks again. Yeah. I definitely want you guys to remember the activities that we did today. Thank you so much. Oh. Leslie, look at our amazing community. Uh, it's just, it's remarkable. It's, it's just such a beautiful thing for all of us. Our good vibes tribe. <laughs> ah, love it, love it, love it. Vibes yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a real great group of people that are so loyal and committed and so passionate about their work. So they just are always looking for these tools and then they really are going to, I'm doing a workshop tomorrow for teachers and Barry, uh, three things, I mark them down. I will surely be using them. Oh, good. No, I don't care what the top, I don't care if it's a math workshop. I, I use these tools. Yeah. I'm They're so glad. Always relevant. Everything from this today and so nice to get this feedback and I get to be here and I read it normally, you know, I get to just kind of take in this feedback and thank you for being here and for being you guys. And let me know, keep me posted. Let me know how it works. Come chat with me on Instagram or Facebook. Let me know. Yay. I'm just going to remind everybody again, Barry, because I know that people are so anxious about um, the important certificates that they really need to have. Uh, they get emailed we will tomorrow or the next day within two days you will have an email it will be sent to the same email you use to register and that will have a link for you to download this the certificate you can type in your own name and print it out put it in your file so there should be no problem at all anybody that was here for the webinar today will get a certificate if you have friends that were not able to attend today but will watch the recording um, and we do this in good faith, they can contact us and we will be able to give them a certificate for their participation as well. Oh, great. Thank you for that, Constance. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Five minutes of relaxation is the equivalent of an hour nap. Just remember that when you go out into the world, but I'm glad. Good, thank you. Oh, so nice. Let me know if you had any favorites before you go. Just feel free to say, oh, I love this one, or I love this, or I want to, I don't want to forget this. I loved Havening. Is it called Havening? Yeah, Havening. 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 Really nice, right? I loved it. I'm doing that tomorrow. Yeah. I got a lot of good feedback. <laughs> oh, fell asleep with shark fin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and music. Yes. I'm on Facebook as Barry Coral. Yeah. Good. Ocean and shark and Havening and bubble gum. Good. Thank you for this. This is helpful. I use my peaceful circle a lot too. I really do. It's kind of like, can kind of calm me down pretty quickly. Thank you. Ocean breath is a winner. <laughs> Aw, the peace song. Oh, the rainbow t-shirt. You know what? I got that on, I don't know. I got it online. <laughs> <laughs> it's so they cute. Run small. I'm just <laughs> they run small. Calm before you correct. Yes. Good. I love that you're going to keep doing havening, finding something that you Aww. like and keep doing it. It's so great. Keep doing it. Thank you, Amy. Definitely. We hope you're with us for another 25 years. <laughs> well, so nice. Oh, 